Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video of this R programming language series. Guys, in this video, I'll be talking about how we can do data pre-processing in using machine learning in R. So data pre-processing is one of the important steps that we often perform while working with any algorithm. So in data pre-processing, uh, which may include how we can handle missing data, how we can encode categorical data, right? And how we can uh, do this uh, splitting of a data. So everything happen under this step. So let's get started and let's see how we can do this in R language. So for this video, I'll be using one data set which I can show you. This is the data set I'll be using. It consists of four columns and 10 rows. And uh, this data set is having some little issues like it doesn't, it has some missing values in age and salary. So I'll be first helping you to understand that how we can uh, handle that missing data followed by how we can convert that categorical data into a numeric one, right? and how we can split the data into training and testing part. This is our today's objective, right? So let's get started. First of all, we need to load the data uh, into our R. So let's load the data here. So if we all are aware to load the data, we need to use read.csv function. So I'll be using uh, a data frame name as data. Uh, it's already there, so I can use some new data frame. Um, new DF. Okay, here I'm using read.csv and we are going to use two parameters here file in which I need to give the complete path I'll be using the path which is available in my uh, downloads location users followed by my username followed by downloads okay and then I'm having a file with the name data dot CSV okay this is done now we need to use another parameter. It's called header equal to true because this data set is having column names. So I need to use header equal to true. So this is done. Okay. So this is done. Okay. So I, I got my data frame loaded. I can make you see. So you can see we have some NA values available. So this NA values can be handled, right? So let's uh, handle that. I'll be replacing this NA values with the mean of that column. Okay. So new DF. Then uh, I need to use dollar sign. First of all, I'll be working on age column. Age. So here I'll be using the is dot na function. Is dot na, right? And then I need to use new df followed by the age column. Okay, this is done, and this will be replaced with the mean. Okay, mean uh, of the same column. So new df dollar okay h and then i can use na dot rm equal to true so this is the little syntax as which i'll be using and it will help me out uh, in replacing the na values with the mean of the age column okay it is done in the same way we have to do it for salary column as well so i'll be not be writing this command again i'll be just replacing this age with the salary here salary Okay, done. And again, uh, I'll be doing here also. It is now salary. Okay, and then I'm again having here salary. This is done. Okay, so let's see if it's working or not. So it should work because now we have write the same syntax. I just replaced the things. So let's check out how new DF look like now. And you can see now this no NA value available. It has been replaced with the the mean of that column. So you can see in the age and salary, there's no N available. So we have done the first step. Okay, the next step is now we have a column available country and purchased and it's country and purchased. I ha this, this is in a like, it's not in a numeric, right? And most of the algorithms of machine learning expects the data in numeric. So I need to encode this data. So I need to encode this categorical data uh, into a numeric one. So I'll be using a factor. I'll be using a factor to encode this into a numeric. So we all are aware what is factor. It's one of the uh, important data structures of R, uh, uh, which uh, always deals with this categorical data. So let's do it. Let's encode this one. So for this, uh, I'll be using, uh, first of all, I need to uh, do this for my country column, new DF country. Okay. And then I need to use a factor function factor. Okay. And factor, first of all, I need to specify uh, new df uh, country okay then i need to specify my levels 
levels uh, are the unique values so i'm having three levels in this let me check out what are the levels here in the country column france spain and germany so france spain and germany are the three levels available so i need to specify with the c function combine function first i'm having france then i'm having a uh, next country it is uh, spain okay and we can define in any order okay it's not an order that france is coming at first why the spain is coming at second it's unordered okay and then germany i'll be replacing these three with the labels so labels i am giving as 1 2 3 okay so this uh, uh names will be replaced with the 1 2 3 labels equal to c 1 comma 2 comma 3 all right i guess we are done we are good i guess let's see so new df again i'm printing and you can see the country has been replaced right you can see with 1 2 3 so same syntax i'll be using for my purchased as well so i'll not be typing it again just to save the time so purchased okay done and again purchased done okay so in this case now it will be uh, yes and no because we have a yes and no available i'll be using no and i'll be using yes here okay and uh, single quotes again now labels will be uh, i can give zero for no and one for yes so let's now check out the final product of my df so you can see now everything has been sorted out both the steps has been done successfully so we have uh, first of all we have uh, converted we have just replaced this na with the mean of it and then we have done what we have just uh, uh, encode the categorical data into numerical data using factor function all right next thing is we need to load a library which is important for splitting my data into two parts training and testing which is ca tools and if it's not available you need to you need to uh, install this first okay with the install dot packages it's important afterwards uh, before we split the data into two parts we need to now use a simple syntax it is called set dot seed okay you must be wondering what is that setting the seeds actually allows you and anyone else using your code to reproduce the exact same results and it's very much crucial for validating and sharing findings so i can define any value here for setting the seed okay so it's playing a very important role right because actually in the data science uh, setting a seed i can also say in other words that it's refer to initializing the random number generator with a specific value this is very much essential when randomness is involved in the processes like shuffling or sampling the data so by in setting up the seed we are ensuring that random processes are not entirely random they become reproducible right this is the main thing so that's why we are doing it now afterwards uh, we need to uh, use a split split equal to and i am now uh, using here sample dot split okay and i'm going to split new df dollar purchased okay split ratio i'm giving 80 20 split ratio i'm giving as 80 20 so i'm using here 0.8 this is done now we gonna use training and testing i'm using now training set equal to um subset function i'm gonna use subset of new df and then split is equal to true so whatever is coming under the uh, in the under the uh, whatever is we are having the true values are coming to the training and the false value will be coming into the testing so let me show you after this just copy and paste and now i'm using here testing testing set okay here it will be false now let me show you both so we can view this view training set okay uh, wait wait it is capital v okay i need to view from here actually you can see this is the uh, one you can you can see now this is the eight values now right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 it's coming for a training in a same way we'll be having the testing 
right in the same way we can have a testing it means my data has been split into two parts training and testing part right i hope uh, it's clear so far now the last step is still pending i need to use feature scaling why we need to use feature scaling let me now show the my new df again to you i'm having uh, age and salary you can see that age is just 44 salary is 72000 the size of the salary is quite large and the size of the age is quite less so i don't want that my algorithm it will be will be biased towards the column or the attribute which has the larger value i want every value to be on same scale for that i need to use feature scaling i hope you're getting my point the feature scaling is very important step so that i, I want all my attributes all my data should be on the same scale it should not happen that if one column is having the more value will uh, my algorithm will be biased towards that or it will be given more priority for that i need to use scaling so for that what i'm going to do is my training set i'm going to use two colon three so much you must be wondering why i'm using two colon three the thing is uh, if i can again make you see new df my index is one is country second is age three is uh, salary and fourth is purchase the country and purchase are both uh, just remember we have just converted this into a numeric using the factor and still a factor it's not a numeric but for the feature scaling i need to define the numeric columns so that's the reason i'm using the subsetting here that i'm only selecting age and salary i'm not selecting the country and purchase because the age and salary are the important ones which we need to Put on a same scale are you getting my point the country is still a factor purchase is still a factor although it's showing like a numeric value but my scaling will only scale will scale function will only take the numeric data not the uh, categorical or the factor data that's a point okay so training set then i'm using uh subsetting here two column three means i'm just selecting age and salary column and i'm gonna use scale function it's available in the r and training set okay and again i'm gonna use two colon three that's it it's very simple it's quite simple in the same way i can do the testing also and we are almost done with this video now testing data testing set and here is testing set done all right so we have done the scaling successfully right uh, this is new df and my training set and my testing set will be having the values which is now on a same scale okay let me show you you can see the uh, testing set is now having this values okay it's on a same scale now right it's on same scale and if i can show you the testing set testing set this is the testing set right i hope you must have understood from this video how we can do the data pre-processing in r using machine learning concepts right and if you got any query just comment on this video i'll be happy to address your comment right thanks for watching guys see you in the next video